Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gaudavani Pujari Mami Rase, Sasunya Vali, Pajkati Ade Satarani. Jai Sri Krishna, Satanya Puruni Tananda, Sri Advaita Gadar, Hara Shivasa Di Gaur, Bhaktivinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Iti Soda Sukam Namna, Kali Kama Sanasana. After searching through all Vedic evidence, one can not find a more simple, sublime process for self-realization than chanting these holy names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Kalikale Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar. See, Krishna has incarnated in his transcendental form as the holy name of the Lord. This name is absolute and non different from the person. Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Punya Sudya Nitya Mukta Abhinnatam Nami Nami in the holy name of the Lord is coming from the spiritual world. It is uh, not anything to do with this material world. It is liberated, unencumbered by anything temporary. And it is Krishna himself in his transcendental form of his holy name. Harinam, 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 Eva Cave alone, Kalon, Nasteva, 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 Gatiranita. In this age of Kali, there's no other way, no other way, no other way to self realization than chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. Kalair Doshani Di Raja, Astiako Mahagu. Kirtana eva krishna sya mukta sangam palangaja. This, this, uh, this age, this, this age of Kali is an ocean of faults, but there is one great maha benediction simply by chanting the holy names of Lord Sri Krishna. One can free themselves from all material entanglement and enter into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. These verses are from Srimad Bhagavatam and Kali Santara Upanishad, Chaitanya Charitamrita. They give us a little bit of an insight of the glories of the holy names of the Lord. So we want to take this particular time, which we do occasionally. It's not scheduled, but occasionally we like to emphasize the glories, process of chanting the holy names of the Lord. Um, in the stages of chanting, three are mentioned successfully. When we begin chanting, we're generally chanting in Nama Parad. And that is, there are 10 offenses to the holy name which are mentioned throughout the scriptures, which we recite daily in our temples throughout the world during the morning program. Now, these 10 offenses encumber the essence of what needs to be avoided when we approach the holy name and we chant the holy name. The mentality that is required and the uh, proper mood of the chanting. There is an 11th offense. The 11th offense is called inattention. Mm -hmm. So this is the offense that keeps us on the non apparat stage. We want to progress at least to the next stage, which is namabas. Namabas is a glimmer, 
a fraction of the glories of the holy name that appears within the mind of the devotee when they chant. It is the, it's analogous to a cloudy day where there is a slight break in the cloud and a ray of sunshine comes through that break. That, that is analogous to the stage of Namabas, which means a glimmer of the holy name of the Lord is being experienced. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the complete and stage that we are aspiring for in our chanting is Sudanam, pure chanting without offense in loving devotion to the Supreme Lord. So this offense of inattention um, comes with what we say material desires. So one of the ways and the recommended way to free, free ourselves from these material desires is to chant the holy names of the Lord. And therefore, one should carefully understand the instructions given to us on how to overcome offenses and how to develop a taste for the holy name, especially the offense of inattention. And that is increased chanting. <laughs> so here is the antidote or the remedy or the process to get over inattention and to develop a taste. Um, Prabhupada has recommended, many times devotees have wrote, written to Prabhupada about problems, difficulties in practicing Krishna consciousness, Sometimes these problems and difficulties were quite severe. Emotional upheavals, reverse, strong reverses in their practice of Krishna consciousness. Many times Prabhupada would recommend the devotee go to the holy place of Sri Mayapur and sit down and chat. That's all. And by continuous and regular chanting, gradually, 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 with patience, it requires patience because sometimes it seems like that when we are chanting the holy name, we struggle very much, both with attention and with time. So removing us ourselves from our daily environment of the routine allows us to have the time we need. And by developing this determination to overcome these offenses and develop a taste, we see that, as Prabhupada recommended, sit down and chant. Sometimes he would say, chant 64 rounds. Well, why 64? That is, again, simply a number. The idea is to continually chant, chant and chant. I know it's a great austerity because sometimes when we force our mind in such a way, the mind goes bang, <laughs> boom. It just explodes and just says, that's it. I can't do it anymore. But when you get to that point, not everyone has that experience, but hopefully we don't have that experience. But if we do, then we just have to push on a little farther and then carefully with great attention and very great intelligence apply the principles of attention and chant clearly and continuously. And this will help us to free ourselves from offenses. Now, when we speak about offenses, we don't just include those 10 offenses to the holy name, because offenses to the holy name are also done throughout the day in the, the way we conduct ourselves. And so if we've committed offenses to Vaishnavas or to the deities, or just in, even to the holy name, um, 
These will also impact the quality of our chanting. It will reduce the quality of our chanting and make chanting difficult. So the best way, of course, when there is Vaishnava Apara is to seek uh, forgiveness for the offense and offer to do service to the to the object that of our object that we have offended. But sometimes we commit offenses unknowingly and not and we're not aware of what we've done. So what is the remedy? Just to sit down and continue to chant, chant, chant. That's right. And by that continuous chanting, um, and this is an experience that I can speak from on a personal level. I remember in 2008, we went to a place called Menlo Park. It was upper state New York. It was a Buddhist retreat center. And His Holiness Sachinandana Maharaj, who had been doing regular Japa retreats, had arranged for this festival of devotees to come. We had to register, and it was a one-week program where devotees would chant. Um, we would come together in the morning as a group and have a class centered around the discussion of the holy name. And then after the class, the devotees would begin to chant. And we were doing uh, 32 rounds a day. And then there would be other days which were designed for greater chanting. We would be chanting 64 rounds. So out of the five days, two days were set aside for 64 rounds like that. And uh, we found, and this was an experience with most of the devotees, that there was a breakthrough in the taste when one reaches a certain level of chanting, that level is, is what we say, uh, personal. Some persons might reach a breakthrough in the early part of their chanting and others in the later part. But everyone had that experience that yes, through this continuous chanting, the holy name started to really uh, become more and more prominent. And once we connect with the holy name, we leave everything aside. Then the world around us no longer exists. And it's just the two of us, Krishna and you. And then it's not a matter of trying to control your senses anymore. The holy name is actually directing your concentration. And because of the taste of that connection, and you automatically are connect, uh, you automatically mind and senses are absorbed in chanting the holy names of the Lord. So this is one of the um, powerful antidotes for overcoming difficulties and developing the chase for the holy name. And the more you drowns you chant, the more your frame of reference cha changes. You get to see things differently. You get to experience things differently. You get to your relationships also change and become more Krishna conscious or more clear in how we interact with devotees. So um, when we're coming to that stage, when we're trying to reach that stage of taste, we're leaving behind the material and we're trying to enter into the spiritual. But into the, in that process of getting from the material consciousness or to the mundane consciousness to Krishna conscious or uh, holy name conscious, there is like a gap. It's called no man's land. There's places in the world today that there are deserts and vacant areas in the world. They call it no man's land. There's nobody living there. It's usually a desert or just a barren piece of land where all there is is animals and insects. It's the only thing that lives there. Nobody ever goes there because there's nothing there. So we sometimes may experience that getting from where we are to where we want to go, we have to go through that realm of no man's land. It's almost like you know, I can't go back, but at the same time, I'm not going forward. 
and it requires determination. And uh, so therefore we have to set aside that time and just make this determination effort. Uh, I was talking to one person who was married to someone who occasionally that person will sit down and just for that whole day will chat. And nobody can disturb him on that day. He'll just chat, chat, chat. And that he does that regularly. I think it's like once a month or once every two weeks. It's a regulated program. So um, taking up these things, then we start to understand deeper and we experience more directly the happiness of chanting Hare Krishna like that. And once that holy name starts to flow into our minds and hearts, you know, everything else uh, falls aside. So Prabhupada gave us the process, which he said was very easy. But then again, when he said one time, he said it was very easy. And he said, it's not so easy. <laughs> he said, I've tricked you. I told you it was easy, but it's not easy. But by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and by the mercy of uh, the spiritual master, one can uh, develop that determination. And this is the feature of success in Krishna consciousness. Sometimes devotees want to know what is the key to success in Krishna consciousness. And one of the major keys, there we might say there are others, but one of the major key is staying determined in the efforts and our practice of Krishna consciousness. Determination is fortified by good association, but it's also a feature of the will. We have experiences in our life where we want something really badly. We may want to get a good degree, so we will put everything else aside and focus on our studies and in a determined way in order to achieve our goal. So in the same way, sometimes we see that someone wants to marry someone. And uh, so they focus their mind of getting, getting that person and they'll do, they're doing everything that they have to do to somehow or other uh, make this relationship happen. So this will, the will to achieve is part of our nature, is part of our existence. And the will is the feature of determination. When applied to Krishna consciousness, it brings about great results. The only thing other that we have to consider is to make sure we are determined in the right way. And what that means, our determination should be clear on how to proceed in that determined way. And of course, that requires advice from the Shastras, from Krishna, from spiritual master, or even from other devotees. But if we can do it, then uh, by that determined effort, uh, we can achieve easily our goal. So in relationship to chanting, which is the essence of our practice of devotional service, this is mentioned throughout the scriptures, especially in Srimad Bhagavatam, especially spoken by Yamaraj when he's talking to the Yamadudas after their failed attempt to bring Ajamil to Yamaraj. He explained that the chanting of the holy names of the Lord is the highest principle in human society. He, no, actually, he said the highest principle in human society is devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the essence of that practice is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So this is where we want to put a lot of our attention. Now we have a little bit more time, we might say, with uh, being somewhat restricted in movements. Uh, we can uh, set aside more time for chanting. But as uh, Srila Prabhupada said, why not just sit down and chant, 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 and make it uh, a regular affair to increase your chanting until 
you can actually feel the taste of the holy name developing. And at that point, it's not a matter of numbers anymore. It becomes a spontaneous attraction to, to chant. So this is the process. It doesn't read. The chanting will purify or at the same time elevate you to that stage of attention. And that's where we want to go, the stage of attention. And we should, as we are advancing in Krishna consciousness, we should be feeling the ecstasy or the happiness of Krishna consciousness. If we're not feeling that happiness, then we need to work on this chanting more and more. And so, when, of course, we experience that easily in kirtan, but it is also there in japa. Okay, so I'll... Uh, stop here and see if there's any comments or questions related to the chanting of the holy names <laughs> uh, thank you so much guru maharaj for this very timely class on the holy name i think uh, every few weeks when we do this it really really focuses us on the most basic and foundational process in our uh, Krishna consciousness, which is chanting the holy names. Thank you so much for giving us this class. Dear devotees, please, if you would like to ask any clarifying questions or share your difficulties with Japa and you would like help with that, please do go ahead and ask your questions or even share your realizations and um, whatever you would like to share with us. Thank you. Uh, Raj Prabhu, would you like to ask that question by unmuting yourself? Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Thank you very much for that nice class. Uh, of course, we're all chanting already. So should we be focused on improving the quality of our chant more? Or should we be focused more on in increasing the quantity of our chant? I don't think you can separate the two. Okay. I think the idea is that the point I was trying to emphasize is that quantity helps bring about quality. <laughs> so in, in trying to perfect quality, we should also be... Uh, you know, chanting more and more and more because they, you know, this is an old adage which applies to life itself that, uh, you know, practice makes perfect. So the more we can chant in a determined way, in a focused way, then the quality will increase. Okay, thank you. Yeah, there are people who mistakenly think that, let me chant a few rounds qualitatively and let the rest go. But that's that's just a, a misconception. And quality comes by way of quantity. Okay. So if we're already doing like 16 as with as much determination as we can muster, <clears throat> then uh, we should just try and do more like at other times or whenever we can. Yeah, I think we should also plan on that, not just wait for the opportunity to appear. I think we should plan on that. Put time aside and just chant, you know. We can do that at a codices is a day that inspires extra chanting. 
And so, we, you know, it's not a matter of just waiting for the, the moment to happen. Plan on it. And then just take some time. It's not that we're going to lose time in other areas. We're, we're actually putting quality into our life by practicing or chanting more and more. Okay, I must try that then. Thank you. Hey, Krishna. Thank you, Raj Prabhu. Are there any other devotees who would like to ask questions? Please go ahead and ask your questions. Sudha Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Uh, Dhanat Pranam, uh, Guru Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you. Uh, thank you, Maharaj. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you have shared so many wonderful points about chanting. I like the last point, Maharaj, like uh, you mentioned, like uh, for the human society. The highest principle is devotional service to Supreme Lord. And the essence is through uh, chanting. Sorry, Maharaj, it, did I get the point right? Um, I just That's right. correct. That's okay. correct. That's a verse from the Bhagavad Gita. It's um, sixth canto, the third chapter, verse number 22, 6322. Mm -hmm. uh, it's spoken by Yamaraj. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I like that point. And Maharaj, you mentioned the last point, like chanting will purify and elevate uh, uh, to the stage of, uh, sorry, Maharaj, can you please tell me the stage of? Of continuous chanting. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, we want to ultimately come to the stage of pure chanting. But before okay. you can come to the stage of Pure chanting, you have to develop a stage of continuous chanting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Continuous means until you uh, purify ourselves through the process of devotional service, the holy name alone, the holy name becomes the feature of our sadhana. It becomes our sadhana itself. Although we do everything, we may also do duty worship which is important. We may also read and study the scriptures, which are essential. But the essence of our sadhana and our practice centers around the quality of our chanting. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, thank you so much. Maharaj, you mentioned about like uh, uh, chanting may go down due to like a deity aparats and offenses or like Vaishnava Aparats, Maharaj. Maharaj, can you please tell me about like uh, deity Aparats that uh, we can come with? I don't have deities, but just would like to know. Well, there are, that's mentioned in the Nectar Devotion. There's a whole list of Aparats that one can commit towards the deity. So the holy name remains the, the foundation of all our advancement in Krishna consciousness. So if we're committing offenses to in other areas of devotional life, for instance, in this case, the deities, it's going to affect the quality of your chanting. <laughs> so we have to um, be careful to avoid offenses, and when we do, to correct those offenses also. Correcting the offenses outside of Vaishnava Aparad means to continually to chant. So one of the ways to overcome uh, offenses is to just chant more and more. To effectively increase our chanting, which overcomes the reactions of our offenses. The Holy Name will do that. But we may have to develop this determination in order to develop that the, the attention we need in order to chant more and more. 
So this is one of the more uh, prominent features of our devotional activities that it requires determination to chant. Mm -hmm. We have to be determined knowing that it's beneficial, purifying the best way to connect with Krishna directly. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you for the nice points. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your holiness. Um, I have a question, Guru Maharaj. You mentioned in the course of today's uh, class that there's this no man's land where you're chanting, you're chanting, you're chanting, but it just doesn't seem to be getting better. You just keep on plugging on, but either your um, attention is not so good or you're not focused and then ultimately you just chant because you have to but you're not improving on the quality of your chanting so what should be done in such cases well you have to analyze what is about your chanting that is needs to be adjusted if your mind is going here and there then maybe you should increase the speed of your chanting to allow your mind less opportunities to divert itself. You might have to slow down and, con and uh, carefully pronounce the sound vibration in order to hear nicely. You might have to pray to the Lord in order to get more and more mercy so you can, can stay focused in chanting the holy names. You may have to put your cell phone away and hide it completely until you're done with your chanting. Mm. You may have to do so many things to, so with a little introspection and introspection, one can analyze, oh, okay. Uh, let me work, uh, let me see what is causing me to not develop that taste. I'm going too slow, I'm going too fast, my mind is, I'm allowing my mind to drift, and when it drifts, I don't bring it back. Um, I'm getting distracted by the environment around me. Mm. Yes, all of these things apply, Guru Maharaj. I, I really appreciate your pointing them out, that all these things have to be eliminated for their this attentive chanting. Yeah, there's more. Am I trying to finish my rounds rather than trying to meet Krishna in the holy name? Mm -hmm. mm. Call that beat, beat the clock, Japa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Mm. Okay, thank you. I will certainly uh, do that introspection and make a list of those things that need to be eliminated. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, mm -hmm. we, we have a question on Facebook by Kelly Vrindavan Mataji. She says, uh, yeah, but no idea how to do this. Um, no, I'm sorry. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, thank you for giving advice on Japa. I'm having a difficulty to concentrate, especially now having health issues. What is the best way to aid in this matter? Thank you. Well, it depends. I don't know exactly what the health issues are and how that's impeding or making your chanting less, but you can, usually when we have health issues, we have less energy. And therefore one, one should more or less try to uh, conserve their energy and maybe chant even softer to try to hear like that, not trying to expend so much energy, which may not last. Um, obviously, health can cause us to become distracted more in our chanting. 
So I think prayer is essential to help to align our consciousness back with the holy name. That prayer opens up the mercy of the Lord and it also helps us feel more peaceful knowing that we are getting help from the Lord and chanting the holy name. But um, you have to see what is it about your health that's causing it more difficulty and try to overcome that. Sometimes when people are so weak because of health, we tell them just to chant in their minds because they, you know, uh, and sometimes we find that they actually, you know, find that satisfying. Of course, Manasi Japa, Japa in the mind is a lot harder. But sometimes when we're sick, it works more readily than loud chanting. So you have to see what will work for you. Again, it's a matter of deciding where you need to put your attention. Uh, is that all right, Kelly Vrindavan Mataji? If you need to ask further questions, please write in the chat and we will forward them to Guru Maharaj. Uh, Mohanasini Radha is asking how to instruct someone who thinks that chanting on the beads has the same quality as chanting without, just in the mind, without uh, chanting the prescribed number of rounds or without even counting the number of rounds. Well, these are not the instructions of our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada. He said, to chant 16 rounds on beads without fail. The beads help us to count, but the beads also give us the sense of touch, the sense of sound, the sense of hearing, sense of speaking, the sense of hearing, and the sense of touch. Now we have three of the senses engaged in the process. So that, that also, and you'll see that will also have an effect on the quality of your chanting when you add the touch factor to it. And Prabhupada emphasized chanting on beads and counting also. This is the process. We think we can do something different and get the same results. Uh, that's very unlikely. Is that all right, Mohanasini Radha Devi Dasi? He says, thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Dear devotees, if you have any questions regarding your own Japa practice or any questions that have come up because of your reading or uh, your uh, own meditations on the holy name, Please feel free to ask any question you like. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glories to Srila Prabhupada and our glories to you. Uh, my question would be about uh, offenses and how to uh, rectify, because lately I had a discussion with someone and I realized that uh, I've heard that when some uh, I I do an offense toward uh, someone uh, directly, uh, it's uh, apologizing uh, is the way to rectify it. And uh, as I heard that when I I make an offense in my mind, uh, to apologize in the mind mind is uh, is uh, okay. Uh, but what happens when uh, when we do it uh, uh, by speech? Uh, for example, like uh, criticizing and not directly to the person. How do we rectify that, that type of offense? Uh, 
Well, you're not saying it to the person, but that, that mentality of criticism is dangerous. And, and if it remains, it'll also grow. So removing that mood or that, that uh, tendency to criticize by becoming aware that this critical, the critical nature that I'm exhibiting is simply uh, going to make my spiritual life difficult. And it's not found that, generally criticism is not founded completely on, on correct understanding. Criticism usually comes from, as we said, grabbing the shadow of the, of the person. It usually comes with an impartial uh, understanding of, of the person and the situation. A lot of times when we know the whole situation, we see things clearly, there's, we see there's no, pur no purpose or no reason to criticize. So usually criticism, criticism is usually usually wrong all the time. <laughs> and it's not, you know, it's just, this is, it's just a product of a disturbed mind. <laughs> we, we find, we, we criticize the non-devotees, but not you know, on a personal level, we criticize their way of life, showing the futility of such lifestyle as being detrimental to their happiness, their well-being, and ultimately to their advancement. So we speak sometimes in a critical way about the nature of the materialists and how they waste their time in, on pursuits that give no benefit at all. But we don't really name persons so much. We just speak in general like that. And sometimes there's a there's a demon out there. And we know he's a demon, <laughs> and so we just tell him, we just say, "Well, that guy is a demon," <laughs> and he is. So, <laughs> but that's not criticism. That's calling a spade a spade. <laughs> but generally, generally from the print from the principle of. Of, of mind thought, the, the critical nature that we we can grow into something that becomes offensive. The criticism should be very carefully understood before you actually speak it. <laughs> If someone is a liar and they're lying and that lying is hurting us so many people by their lies and we can see that and we point it out, that's not criticism, that's service. It's interesting though, because sometimes I have a feeling that it also happens that uh, we say that we are just stating the facts, but actually, it seems to be criti a criticism. So uh, it, there uh, is a fine line. You have to you have to understand that fine line. See, when it comes to devotees, it's better not to find fault at all. Mm -hmm. We find fault with the way materialists live their life. Mm -hmm. But generally, for devotees, is even if a devotee has a fault, it's not so important. No sense of bothering yourself with that. It just it just causes the mind to become unhappy. What can we do if it uh, if it happens after all? Uh, I mean, I I try not to do it, but sometimes uh, I'm I'm frustrated. Well, you, you, you catch yourself and then be aware of the fact that. A tendency is there, and then try not to do it again. That's all. I <laughs> there is constructive criticism, but you have to know how to apply that and when to apply that. Yeah, it, it needs intelligence how to do it, and and. 
what is actually going yeah, you got it. It requires intelligence and discrimination. Mm -hmm. The intelligence means to, to understand the situation. Thank you very much. It was really helpful. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Vivek Prabhu, please go ahead and ask your question. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, I have two questions. Um, first one, um, I'm not sure whether that's a right question, but um, see, like we we say that holy name is non different from Krishna and everything in the spiritual world uh, uh, like uh, like every object is uh, personality in the spiritual world yeah and when we talk about holy name holy uh, holy name Prabhu like uh, uh, Hari Nam Prabhu sorry Hari Nam Prabhu Ki Jai yeah sometimes are we referring here as a Krishna like for this holy name, or this is something like different personality as a Hari Nam. <laughs> I never heard Prabhupada use that Hari Nam Prabhu, but <laughs> it's you just it's a way of glorifying the holy name. Prabhu simply means master. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's just something that has filtered into our our jargon, our way of talking. It's not wrong. It's just kind of indicates something. But I wouldn't say it's a, a principle you find it, and you won't find it in the Shastras anywhere. The holy name, people like that. It's something that's it's just come in, come by way of the mood of the mood of a devotee. So um, it's a way of glorifying the holy name as being the the ultimate master. Also. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. So I think this is like when we are thinking that holy name Prabhu or holy name, it's like Krishna as a supreme lord. Yeah, it's Krishna. Of holy name. Exactly. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, if it's okay. Can I ask a second question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Guru Maharaj, like uh, you always emphasize, and it's also written in the scriptures, that holy name is the most powerful thing. And whenever we get time, we should try to increase more and more uh, our japa and uh, keep chanting. But uh, when, like, uh, say some time it is still there, uh, after doing all our prescribed rounds and uh, uh, reading, hearing, uh, should we focus more like we should utilize that time on chanting or should we utilize that time on reading or or like it depends like on the mood, like whatever, like mind say in that way. Like normally I it's go with the to you. Guru Maharaj, to you. I just wanted to understand is there any process which should be followed? Some people will use their extra time. Uh, some devotees will use their extra time to read and others will use their extra time to chant. Mm -hmm. That's, that's up to you, both Krishna consciousness. But we're specifically emphasizing the chanting in this particular discussion. So we would, we would say, and I would also agree that um, this is my inclination. My inclination would be to use that time for chanting as opposed to reading. Some people would go for reading. It's not, uh, it's not like, one is better than the other. It's just where you're going to put your uh, devotional attention at that time. Both are very important. When we speak of reading, we're not just speaking of just reading, but we're speaking of reading Srila Prabhupada's books. Yeah. 
Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hmm. Hare Krishna. Um, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances again. I have a question. Would you recommend that on Ekadashis, we all come together on Zoom and chant extra rounds together? Well, you can, if you want to organize it, go ahead. <laughs> Um, yeah, go ahead and do that and then see how many people come on board. It's a good idea. Yeah. So maybe this Ikadashi, we can do some organizing and come up with some uh, plans. It's actually a very, I like, I like the idea. It seems good. I just make it, just have a, a time period. But somebody has to be on there all the time to keep it going. Doesn't mean doesn't mean the same person has to be, but someone should be there all the time. And you'll find devotees will come on and they'll go off and they'll come on and go off like that. But yeah, it's a nice idea. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Maybe this Ekadashi we can make an attempt at least by your mercy. We'll try. Yeah, well, of course, time differences are, are also a consideration, but Anytime you start it, just make it, you know, try to pull in as many people as you can. Yeah, we can just send a little survey out to see what is the best times for people in different time zones and then find a common time that will work for everyone. No, just go ahead and start it. Pick a time and go ahead and start it. Since you're in America, you're the, you're the earliest time. You're the earliest time zone. So everyone's going to be later than you. Okay. Yes, Guru Maharaj. We'll certainly try by your mercy and blessings. Thank you so much for your encouragement. Yeah, go ahead and organize it. Okay, so maybe we can uh, end here. And thank you very much. And um, I'll be uh, arranging for a particular uh, session on Preetu Maharaj's uh, Becoming Angry at Mother Earth. This is uh, from the 17th chapter of the fourth canto. Uh, and there's a series of verses that we'll speak on every day. Um, tomorrow is our program with uh, with uh, Charlotte, which starts at twelve twenty. Uh, uh, UK time. Uh, follow the calendar. We have put out a calendar now. And it's being updated regularly, and you can catch the timings and also the topics. So tomorrow's class, I'm not sure what the particular verse is, but it's from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Thank you, Guru. Okay. Would you would you be kind enough to take one final question? Vivek Prabhu has raised his hand. You sure he's raised his hand, or is that the same hand he just kept up for the last question? Oh, maybe yes, Guru Maharaj. Sorry, yeah, it's a mistake, my end. Sorry, my apologies. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Shila Prabhupada ki, Sri Hari Nam Sankirtan ki. Thank you so much for a beautiful class on the holy name and for encouraging us to get better in our chanting. Thank you so much. We are very grateful for your mercy. Thank you. Sri Devi, are you able to continue with the transcriptions? <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. For this week, I will be able to continue. But next week, my laptop may have to go in for repairs.
So I'll try to do as much as possible before this weekend. Well, even when your laptop goes for repairs, maybe you can uh, see if you can borrow one and keep it going if possible. Okay, I can try that. Yeah, this is something that I need to continue to work on because there's so much work in that this area that every every day I need to work on it. Okay, I'll try to postpone getting the laptop repaired as long as possible. No, just borrow something. Okay, I can do that too. I'll try. Yeah, don't let your laptop crash. <laughs> okay. No, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, I'll try. Thank you. Thank you, dear devotees. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Dev. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you.